Hey everyone and welcome back. Before we begin here today, please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really does help out our channel over here. And it also helps us reach others who want to test their math skills with these types of test questions. So this will be the 15th part in our series. And what we have going on here is we have to determine the area of the red region above these two curves shown here. And we are told a few things here that the outline shape is a rectangle. The first equation up here, which I'm not going to repeat all that, you can see it right there. That first equation is only valid for 15 feet. So from this point to this point right here would be 15 feet. And then the second equation shown down here from, uh, from here to here will only be six feet for its validity. So the peak of the first curve intersects the top edge of the rectangle. So this peak of the first curve flattens out and intersects the top edge of our rectangle right there. So a few things we're going to have to do. One is that we are going to have to get the overall area of our rectangle. Well, we have the overall width down here, which just be 15 feet plus 6 feet. But we need to determine what our height is in order to get our total rectangle area. And then we need to determine the area under each of these curves shown in white here. And then once we have our overall rectangle, we can subtract the area under each of these curves in white, and that would give us our area in red. So let's start there, and let's go ahead and get our area for each of these curves. So this would be the area under each curve. And the way you would get your area under the curve, which let's just label this one as the first one, the area you would get under your curve would just be the integration of your equation with the limits being from its starting point to its ending point. So we're just going to call this zero feet over here up to 15 feet down here at this point. So our area for this first one, which I'm just going to call A1, is going to be equal to the integration of my y equation with respect to x, which will be from zero to 15 feet for this entire equation shown up here, which is 2 45ths x cubed minus 2x squared plus 18.13x plus 28.05 dx. All right, so the integration of each of these terms, since they are separated by pluses and minuses, it's pretty in easy integration. We're just going to integrate each term separately, carrying across the pluses and minuses. So with the first one, we're going to have 2 45ths multiplied by 1 quarter x to the fourth, and then subtracting off two times one third x cubed plus 18.13 times one half times x squared. And then finally, because 28.05 is a constant, when you integrate a constant, you just slap on the variable you're taking the derivative or the integration with respect to, which would be x here. And of course, that will be from zero to 15 feet for x. So let's simplify this down a little bit further here. 2 45ths times 1 quarter becomes 1 90th x to the fourth minus off 2 thirds x cubed plus 9.065 x squared and plus 28.05 x, once again, from 0 to 15 for x. So let me scroll down here just a little bit. All right, so now we're going to plug in 15 for each of these x's, and we really don't need to use the zero at this point um, because you're just be subtracting off zero, and every variable has an, or every uh, term has an x with it, so just be like zero to the fourth times that, zero to the third, and all that. So we're just going to focus on the 15 here. So this would be 1 90th times 15 to the fourth minus off 2 thirds 15 to the third plus 9.06515 squared plus 28.05 times 15. And this, of course, rounded out as an answer approximated gives you 772.875 square feet. So that's how much area is in white underneath my first curve. All right, so we're just going to have to repeat that process for the second one. And that's how much area we would have under our white portions here. So let me scroll down, give myself plenty of room here. So working with our second one, which I'm just going to write in blue. So A2 will be this integration, once again, with respect or of the y equation with respect to x for my second equation, 
which would be from um, zero to six feet, because we're going to call this zero for this first or the second equation. We're going to say that's point zero, and that's six feet. You could do the 15 and then 21 if you wanted to, but you would also have to use the subtraction portion of the bottom number. So it's a lot easier just to go zero to six in this case. So the equation would be minus 1 12th x cubed minus off x squared plus 15x dx. So this would be 1 12th. Once again, very easy integration here. Just integrate each term or each part separated by the pluses and minuses. So we would have minus 1 12th times one quarter x to the fourth minus off one third times x cubed plus 15 times a half times x squared. And that would be from zero to six feet. So let's simplify down and plug in our six here for x. So minus one twelfth divided by, divided by four, so multiply by a quarter, gives you one over 48. Don't forget the minus sign there. And that would be times six to the power of four minus off one third times six to the power of three, and then plus 7.5 times six squared. And the same reasoning as before, we don't need to include the zero because every single term here includes an X. So it'd all be times zero. So you really aren't plusing or minusing anything off there. And we get 171 feet squared as our answer, which makes sense because it is a much, much smaller area compared to the first curve. All right, so we have our two areas for our curves here, what we are going to subtract off from the overall rectangular area. Well, we have the width of the rectangle. We do not have the height of the rectangle. So how in the world are we going to get that? Well, we're going to get that by using the last sentence here where it says the peak of the first curve intersects the top edge of the rectangle. So the top edge of the rectangle is the height of this curve. So what we're going to have to do is we are going to have to find out at what position this curve has a peak at. What is that distance for x? Well, how do we do that? Well, we are going to have to find the derivative of this y equation because the derivative, wherever that derivative of this equation is equal to zero for y, that resulting x position would be the peak of the integration of that same equation, which is the starting equation we have. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to find the derivative of this equation and then plug in zero for y and see what x value gives us that, and then take that x value and plug it back into our original equation here. So let's go ahead and let's do that. So <clears throat> my location, so x at the location of the peak is when the derivative of my y equation with respect to x equals zero. So we are going to have to find the derivative of that first y equation with respect to x. So let's go ahead and plug that in, which was 2 over 45x cubed minus off 2x squared plus 18.13x plus 28.05. Once again, easy derivative to be taken. We don't have to use any kind of quotient rule or product rule or chain rule here. Everything is in terms of a x to the b. And when you take the derivative of that with respect to x, it's just going to be b times a times x to the b minus one power. Pretty simplistic there. So let's go ahead and do that. So it'd be two over 45 times three x squared, and then minus off two times two x, and then plus 18.13. And of course, the 28.05 does not have a variable x attached to it. It is just a constant. Whenever we take the derivative of a constant, it disappears. So let's simplify this down a little bit further here. So this just becomes 2 fifteenths x squared, and then minus off 4x plus 18.13. All right. So now we just need the value of x that will create this equation equal to zero, and that will give us the location of which our initial equation is peaked out when it maximizes at that curve. So we have a quadratic equation here, so pretty simplistic on how to find that. If you've done everything else, the quadratic equation is should not be scary if you've already done everything else here. So we have minus b plus or minus b squared minus four times ac, all of that square rooted, all over to a. So this would just be when you plug everything in here, you would have the minus, the minus four, plus or minus the square root, 
of minus four squared minus four times two fifteenths times 18.13. And all of that would be divided by two times two fifteenths. And of course, whenever we have a quadratic equation, you're gonna get two roots as your answer for X. One will make sense in this case, one will not. So the X possibilities that we get here for when this equation is equal to zero would be at a location of X equal to 24.43 feet. And the other one would be 5.56 or 5.565 feet. So which one of those makes sense? Well, it's going to be our 5.5 six five distance because if we scroll back up here the 24 doesn't make sense because our maximum distance here is 21 for the rectangle and our maximum distance for the validity of the first curve is 15 feet so we definitely can't be over that so it's going to be our 5.565 foot location so this would be our peak location where that curve is peaked out now we just have to determine what is the height or the magnitude of y for that initial first curve. So we're just going to take this x and we're going to plug it back into the initial curve. So y would be 2 over 45 times 5.565 cubed minus off 2 times 5.565 squared plus 18.13 times 5.565 and then plus the 28.05. And this gives us a total height of 74.665 feet. Of course, you're rounding a lot in this problem, but that would be our overall height. So my area of my rectangle would just be that width, which would be the 15 plus the six, which is 21 feet times my height of 74.665 feet. And that gives me a total area for my rectangle of 1567.96 feet squared. All right, so that's the overall area. And we already have our areas for our first curve in white and then our second curve in white here. And we're looking for the red region. So we're just gonna take these two and subtract them from our overall rectangular area, and that will give us our total red area. So total area in red would just be my rectangular area that I just found, which is 1567.96 feet squared. And then we're going to subtract off our total of our two areas that we just found, which was the 700 72.875 feet squared for the first curve, and then subtracting off 171 feet squared for the second curve. And that gives us a total approximation of our area above those curves in red inside the rectangle of 624.084 feet squared. And that would be my answer for this particular problem. So, <clears throat> That's how you would solve that problem using integration and derivation to find peaks, areas below the curves. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned a new math skill along the way. If you want to test your abilities even more, please check out the other videos on our channel as this is the 15th part in our series. Also, if you haven't done so already, please like this video, leave a positive comment below and subscribe to the channel because all of that does assist us on this end. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day.